Cardinal or Hera High School. We're the Snow College High School Explorers facing off against the Lions of Cardinal or Hera. Today we have a great game on tap for you all. I'm here in the booth with Alex Shevchuk as well as Oliver Gomez. Gentlemen, before you tip off here, why don't you give us some of our thoughts? Yeah, Either of these teams, if they can get the win today, that puts them right back in the playoff race. There's a lot of season to go around. Yeah, absolutely. So we will definitely have a great game on tap for you today. Here we'll take it in with some player intros. First for LaSalle, they're dressed in the navy blue. That'll be Grayson McHugh there, number 13 center, getting the start. He's been great so far this year. Had a couple big plays against Archbishop Wood. Here we have Hazel Tamari, number 21. And here Nick Parisi, the sharpshooter for the Explorers, number four. Did a great job as well. That last matchup against Archbishop Wood, the Explorers lost in a very tight game. And of course, Liam Hawley there, the backcourt floor general for LaSalle, number one, and then rounding out the bunch, number five, Joe Shields. Here for the Lions of Cardinal O'Hara. First of all, getting the nod there was the head coach, Fran O'Hanlon. O'Hanlon, the Patriot League's all-time winningest coach for Lafayette College on a near three-decade tenure and a Villanova Hall of Famer, and he's here to coach. That's number 15, Ty D. Clark. Number three, getting the start there. That'll be 31, Pierce McGuinn. Flash Burton there. One of the best players in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Does a great job for the Lions. Averages close to 24 points, four assists per game. Leaves it all on the floor on the regular there for the Lions. So tip off here from Delaware County. Two teams looking to get back on track here in the Philadelphia Catholic League. LaSalle winless. Arch, er, Cardinal O'Hara also on a bit of a skid here in league play. Four consecutive PCL losses for the Lions. But let's see what changes tonight. Nick Parisi going up with that one. Blocked away. Pierce McGuinn. McGuinn taking his talents to Stonehill College next year. A very great player here for the Lions. Top of the key, finding Flash Burton. Flash crossing over, getting to the lane, and then fouled right there. Liam Hawley will pick up the shooting foul. Flash Burton, just such a talented scorer from all three levels and gets very well to the line there. The rider commit does well in scoring for this O'Hara team. Yeah, absolutely, and Flash Burton did a great job lighting up this Explorer team last year. They previously met from LaSalle College High School in January 2023, and the Explorers lost that one with a score of 60 to 44. But one thing that we know is both, te both these teams are absolutely very different. Two head coaches just starting out their 10 years here. For LaSalle, it's Ryan Ansel. Still in search of the first Philadelphia Catholic League win. However, 
They've only lost their last four contests by a total margin of 12 points. So absolutely within reach for this young Explorer team, at least for the Lions of Cardinal O'Hara. A good mix of youth and seniority. The ball there is dumped back out. O'Hara passing back out to Flash. Flash down to McGuinn and right there, that, that dynamic duo. Flash Burton to Pierce McGuinn. Did a great job getting to the bucket right there and putting that one up. So Hawley here, top of the key. And the Explorers there will regroup with a nice put back from Grayson McHugh. He was in the right spot at the right time and put that one up, no issue. You have Chai G. Clark passing that one back off to John Quinn. Quinn now met with Parisi, top of the key. Flash Burton there. Flash Burton, the all Delaware County player, dumps that one back off. That one's a little bit strong off the back end of the rim. Pass back out, McGuinn with a three of his own. He'll cash in on that one. And the Lions right there lead 7-2. A five point lead early in this first quarter. Liam Hawley now with the ball for the Explorers. Preezy there going up from elbow range and cashes in on the mid-range shot. What a great stroke, Alex. Yeah, Preezy just does a good job of getting to the elbow there and just using a shot fake in that little bit of space and just shoots it right over to the defender. Right there, O'Hara. Great job of getting to the basket. That's number 11, John Quinn again. Coming off that little pick, finding that open space and attacking the basket. A textbook play from the Lions here. 9-4 is our score. Hawley now passing down low to Shields. That one is kicked off the shin. Bounced away, but you know, Hawley does a great job passing that ball around. And you know, Oliver, that's something that we've watched, especially from our broadcast uh, from home here with LaSalle, is just that passing ability from Hawley. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, they've had a couple close games in the past. And just watching this team, they're 0-6, but you watch these games and you think this team can be competitive. They can play well, but it's when they have stuff like this happen. It's just sloppy, just not very good passes, very loose. Um, but when they tighten up, they can really be a good team, and I think they can beat anybody in the league. Yeah, absolutely. LaSalle definitely solidifying themselves as an upset team in the league. That one, however, will stay with the Explorers. Tipped off a player wearing white. For the Lions, and that'll be Hazel Tamari underneath the basket with the inbound play. So Hayes finding Parisi, Parisi from afar. That's a high quality look for a player like Parisi right there. Cannot convert on that one. So O'Hara here taking their times with things. And that'll be Flash Burton pulling up. He'll cash in from the three. And Burton does a great job from deep. That whole offense is ran through him. A skilled player on all levels of the court right here, proving this one as the Lions get out to an early lead. Breezy contemplated the three. He'll go up with that one. Fouled on the way up. So the Lions out to an early lead here, tripling the score of the Explorers. That's a key play. Nick Parisi making the smart move, Alex, and getting to the basket with the foul. Yeah, he just did a good job using the jab step and get into the basket with the pump fake. Got the defender to jump on him and use his body just to get it and draw the foul. Right there, Parisi off the front end of the rim with the first shot. He will convert on the second. So LaSalle right there, down seven points, meeting the Lions in a little bit of a full court set here, trying to see if they can trap this ball, which has ran through Burton. Burton coming up with that one. That's a contested shot. Does not care about that one. Great defense played by Liam Hawley right there, but Burton disagrees and, and puts that one up. Yeah, Danny, he just uses his size and uses that such a great shot of his and just gets it right over Liam Hawley there. Oh, well, that one right there, stuck in the corner of the rim. How about that? Parisi did a great job of getting that one up there. It was a heavily guarded space. Unfortunate right there to have that ball go the other way. 
14-5 is our score. Burton right there, passes back out. That's 15. Clark, he'll miss on that one. Hawley now with the ball. Hawley finding some open space, taking it for himself. Right there, the foul is on the floor. So that foul will be underneath the basket, and Hazel Tamari will be the inbound man for the Explorers. Hayes debating the pass to McHugh. Parisi out. McHugh here. He'll take him one on one. McHugh on McGuinn. McHugh will go up with that one. Great bucket by McHugh. It's a hard nosed basket. And he's known for that, establishing a presence in the paint and moving out of that. So McGuinn here passes back down. John Quinn with the ball. Dumps that one out to Clark. Clark looking to find his way to the basket, and he does. Great job by Clark right there. Taking on Parisi one-on-one, -on -one going up with that. That's a fearless play, guys. Really good finishing from O'Hara to start. Getting their chances down low, and they've been making them count. That's Hawley right there. Debating the shot, passes that one out to Shields. Shields going up with that one. That's a really tough shot. Misses. But he'll be sent to the line. So Noah McIntosh right there, picking up the foul. And Shields here will miss on the first. So 16 to seven is our score. And he'll miss on a second right there. Cannot convert. Rough start here for the Explorers. Yeah, exactly. Just really can't find the cup early. However, we do know that this team is known to play in the second quarter. As well as the third and fourth. A lot of these games so far have been slow starts, especially the one we called against St. Joseph's Prep. The South found themselves with a 20-point deficit, worked all the way back, and ended up losing that game by only two scores. So... A slow start for this team really doesn't mean anything, but obviously need to see the baskets pick up early in this one. And that all starts with defense right here. LaSalle tightly guarding the Lions. That's Quinn. This is what we saw uh, Carroll do against LaSalle after their game against Devon. LaSalle was on fire from three, and we saw them push up, and it worked pretty well. So LaSalle taking some methods from another team, it looks like, for a team that really started shooting well from three. Absolutely right there. So that'll be Quinn fouled on that play, setting him to the line. The Lions here with the chance to make it a 10-point lead, a double-digit lead, first of the game so far. Right there, Quinn Will. So both teams in a little bit of foul trouble, three and three to start off the game. Really have to give props to these O'Hara Lions. They have a great gymnasium here. It's always great to have seating on all levels, so it creates a very intimate environment, as well as a scoreboard here. Uh, not too many scoreboards in the league will give you timeouts remaining as well. So always a blessing to be here in this remodeled gym here from Delaware County. Luke Hudak checking in for the Explorers, number two. He'll take that ball up. Hudak, Altamare, O'Brien also in for the Explorers. Breezy past the Hudak. Down to the block, McHugh. He's tightly guarded there. That ball is picked off. Flash Burton, back to him. And Flash Burton almost throwing that one down. Would have been a highlight play for the ages. McHugh there with a basket of his own. And LaSalle will call timeout after that play. First year head coach, Ryan Ansel. Looking to regroup here for the Explorers. Big break for LaSalle. Would have been a huge momentum boost, but got a little too greedy trying to throw that down. So they get the points in return. Absolutely. Now, you know, in the other huddle that we have here, head coach Mike Richards, he was supposed to coach for the Lions, 
He had stepped down this summer, and that in turn gave the opportunity to first-year head coach Fran O'Hanlon, who we talked about earlier, is the Patriot League's all-time winningest coach for Lafayette College. Coached for 27 years, led the team to multiple NCAA tournaments, as well as being a Villanova Basketball Hall of Famer. Definitely will go down as one of the greatest players in the Big Five, one of the best players in the Philadelphia Catholic League with his time at Monsignor Bonner. Uh, and you know now he has the opportunity here to lead this O'Hara Lions team to some success in the league. So absolutely a great storyline that we have growing. So that's Clark there. He'll take his time with this. Breezy meets him close to the logo. Very important, LaSalle locks down for a few of these possessions. And that's a travel right there. So before that referee could call that reach in on Nick Parisi with the grab on the arm, the travel was already there. And that is absolutely huge for the Explorers. They can take advantage of this and get some big transition buckets. This is when LaSalle's been taking advantage uh, throughout the year. They're a big comeback-oriented team. They get down early a lot. They mind their way back. But once they see teams make mistakes like that, like that travel, they do stuff like make those good passes there and they can get themselves back in the games if they take advantage of those mistakes. Tough Clark one there. with the ball. Right there, Pierce McGuinn. How about that? From three, Pierce McGuinn now cashing in on two threes. Doesn't matter how far away that one is. He'll knock him down from the corner. He's out to Mari. Pest to Parisi. Parisi to O'Brien, thinks about pulling up. Hayes contemplates. Luke Hudak there from deep. Hudak will cash in. That's a big three for the Explorers. 21 to 12 is our score here with around half a minute to go in the first. McGuinn passes back out to Clark. Clark met with a tight double. Looks to the corner. That was Hobbs dumping that one back out to Clark. To McGuinn. McGuinn, a full head of steam. Passes the one back out. Hobbs. Hobbs going in right there. Drops the pivot foot. Pierce McGuinn with the ball now. Dumps that one back in. And right there, that ball is picked off. Nick Parisi, a full head of steam to the basket. And he'll convert on that layup right there with three seconds left. A 21 to 14 score here after one. Guys, some of your takeaways right there from the first quarter. I mean, yeah, Danny. I mean, O'Hara's had a good first quarter scoring 21 points. We've seen from Pierce McGuinn and Flash Burton just showing le showing leadership on this team and scoring ability. And those two threes from Pierce McGuinn has put O'Hara up seven. But LaSalle's had a better end of the first quarter, inching back in, only down seven when they were down 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 by ten earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Alex, or how about you, Oliver? Yeah, uh, Carroll off to a really hard start from three. We saw LaSalle try to push up, uh, try to prevent that, but they still left a couple guys open. There were a couple corner threes that they had plenty of time to take the shot, and they got to be tighter because Cardinal O'Hara, they're going to continue these, uh, the way they've been shooting, so LaSalle's got to tighten up. Absolutely, so definitely a lot to take away here after one. How about that for the energy in this building, guys? A nice drum line here playing. It almost reminds me of the 76ers in a way. So great to see that. So LaSalle right now taking the court in a similar lineup to what they finished that first quarter with. Rudolph will play the point guard position there and the rest of the gang, number three, Joey O'Brien for Nick Parisi. Both had nice games against Archbishop Wood. O'Brien did a great job off the bench. Parisi was the sharpshooter. And down in that front court block. Grayson McHugh, number 13, stands tall at six foot eight. Right there, that ball is missed from the three. So that's John Quinn there with a chance to regroup for the Lions. They gotta improve that if they wanna have a chance at this game. Number one, 
So Will Bear here checking in for the Explorers. Playing a key role there as the backup big there for the Explorers. So Brian there will convert. 24-16 is your score. It's Quinn back out to Burton. Sal once again meeting the lines with some pressure here from half court. Hudak tightly guarding Quinn. Dumps that one to McGuinn. Passes back out to Quinn. A little bit too soft there on the lay. However, it'll stay Lion Ball. Looked like Quinn almost committed too much there to the leak into the paint. And put that one up as he was almost right under the rim, guys. So Burton there with the ball. Burton right there. How about that hezzy fake and the bucket from mid-range. Flash Burton has been knocked down in this game. And he's a problem. Well, Sal has to watch out for him. So Hawley here with the ball, number one. He'll take him on one-on-one -on -one right there and a great basket over McIntosh. So Sal looking to trap Burton here. He'll find Quinn. And look at that, a long throw. Back to him, though. He'll slow things down. Not before a pass to Burton, however. Tightly guarded by O'Brien. One of the best defenders for this LaSalle team. But how about that dump pass right there? A great job of getting that ball to Miles Johnson down low. And Johnson there fouled going up. That's an and one. I'm, I mean, what, like, comfortable move by Flash Burton there. Just get into the paint and just diming number five right on the backdoor cut. Yeah, absolutely. That was a perfectly executed backdoor cut. Did a great job of getting to the block. Patiently waiting right there, drawing the contact, but ignoring it and going up with that one unfazed. So Preston Washington here will check in for the Explorers. They'll take out Luke Hudock. A triple from him is a big bucket for the Explorers, but right now down 11 points here. Hawley has the ball. Hawley finds Parisi. Parisi going up, and he is rejected right there. What a block. Miles Johnson rejecting that one. Sending it in to the O'Hara student section. Not too many students here tonight. But nonetheless, a great block. Right there, O'Brien off the foot. That'll stay LaSalle ball. So the Explorers down 11 points. Parisi here with the ball deep. Preston Washington, top of the key. O'Brien here with the ball. O'Brien, how about that? Nice lay, could not fall. Burton here with the ball again. Nick Parisi pulls up the ball. Drives. Blocked by Burton, but he puts it back up. Quinn. Hits McQuinn. And here Quinn at the top of the key. Quinn right there. That ball is tossed up. Washington picks it up. That one to Parisi. Parisi will get the layup. Good defense there by Preston Washington and just throwing it out to Nick Parisi. Now a couple times they've gotten some fast break points off steals. That's definitely a really good thing if they can make that more of their game. That ball right there is off, but picked up by number three. He'll be fouled. McIntosh right there. That's been LaSalle's Achilles heel this year, is offensive rebounds. They give up a lot of putback points. They're giving up foul shots here when they should have had that rebound going the other way. That ball right there under the hoop. Quinn here with the inbound play. Quinn finding McGuinn. Quinn here rounding that one out. That's Clark. McGuinn here pulling up again. Why not? Misses on that one. So three for four so far. Preston Washington taking that one up quickly. Preston Washington finding McHugh down low. 
And Hawley right here choosing to take his time with things. It's a good choice right here. You're about halfway through this first half. You're only down seven points. You chipped away at this lead. It's just evident that you get this bucket right here. So Hawley there, passing that one out. Preston Washington, he'll pull up. That one right there around the edge of the rim. Hawley getting the offensive rebound there. Also pays out to Mare. So McHugh there debating the pull up. O'Brien here with the ball. Now O'Brien back out to Hayes. Hayes dumping that one out to McHugh. And McHugh trying to put that one up, but he's called for the, the walk with the ball. So McHugh is arguing, faced a little bit of contact right there. But that'll be Lion Ball. Seven point lead, three minutes and 40 seconds to go in this contest. LaSalle again meeting them. Right there, Clark trying to hop step, get to the lane. And right there, that's a foul on the floor going against number 15, Preston Washington. So LaSalle continuing their foul trouble here. That's the team's third foul. With about three and a half minutes left to go in this game. So like you said, Oliver, you know, that, you know, rebounds are definitely one of LaSalle's Achilles as well as those foul calls. You know, you really can't give those up on the floor. They're going to add up, and those can end up biting you here late in the quarter when you need some big buckets. 15, Clark. Preston Washington there clapping in his face, getting locked in on defense right there. Clark getting up with that one. And they're calling him for the travel. So Clark picked it up. You saw him take that first step. You saw him take the other step. And then right there on that last one, that'll call it right there. The third step going into the lane was enough to sell it for the referees. So now a Hera meeting LaSalle in a full court set of their own. Backing off the pressure a little bit here, letting Hawley take this one up. LaSalle still down seven points here, under three to go. Hayes finding McHugh down low. McHugh backing away, trying to find Hayes again. That ball is turned over. Oh, and right there, a great play. That's number five, Miles Johnson. He's been active in this half. And right there, getting on the board once more is number five, and he'll pick up the steal. And a full head of steam trying to go for the dunk. Ends up backing off at the last minute. May have slipped on the floor right there. He'll still get the bucket with the layup, but... We could have seen ourselves a nice highlight play, guys, with that jam. Unfortunately there, he'll have to settle for the layup. 33-22 is our score. This is what can happen if you're LaSalle. You're uh, getting your way back into this game, and you make two mistakes. Turn over the ball a couple times, they get four really quick points, and that's how you see the score just rack up on you. Now you have a lot more work to do. Yeah, so Parisi here with the ball. Dumps that one out to Preston Washington. He'll pull up right there mid-range. That one... Clanks off the back side of the backboard and the rim. And the Lions will have another opportunity to score right here. McGuinn dumps that one off quickly. Flash Burton. Hawley tightly guarding him. Hawley a great defender for his size. That one's dumped again. Clark pulling up from way downtown. And Clark draining that one. That was a deep three, ladies and gentlemen. NBA range it looked like. And the Lions continue their lead. Pays out to Mare, passes back out to Parisi. Parisi pays out to Mare from the corner. Out to Mare, long on that one. Was aiming for the bank shot. A little bit too far. And here come the Lions. Burton sees the mismatch. Win right here. Burton again. Tightly guarded by Hawley. Hawley. Yeah, right there. Burton was going up with that one. The offensive foul is called, however. It'll be LaSalle ball. Pivot foot was not set for number two, Flash Burton. That'll result in LaSalle basketball here with a little bit over one minute to go. He's out to Mare here with the inbound pass to Hawley. Imperative that LaSalle gets back on the board. They had cut that lead down to seven points. 
now sitting at 14. So just in a short amount of time right there, the Lions have doubled that lead. And LaSalle absolutely a slow start in this first half. Nevertheless, this final minute, so important. They're able to get on the board as soon as possible, as well as some key stops. But the Lions keep on rolling right there. That's a great answer. Nick Parisi from the corner, wide open. That right there is a winning formula. So now Flash Burton here, dumps that one off. Clark with the ball. Clark guarded by Washington. Quinn with the ball now. And right there, O'Hanlon signaling Quinn to take their time and run the plays they know best. Oh, and how about that? Parisi trying to take, er, oh, I guess we have a jump ball on the, on the floor. So that was McIntosh. He had the ball in his hand, it was a toss up. You saw Parisi behind him, then we saw Shields there looking to take that charge if it was available. But that ball was lost right there. So I guess a jump ball has it stay with the Lions there under the basket. So 22.3 left. Guys, if you're Cardinal O'Hara, what play are you running here to close out this half? I mean, they've been lights out from three, so I would be looking for a backdoor screen or a flare screen to either Pierce McGuinn or Flash Burton or get a one-on-one -on -one situation for Flash to take it to the paint there. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Flash Burton, definitely one of the better one-on-one -on -one players in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Again, he's an all-Delaware County player, an all-Philadelphia Catholic League player. Uh, he's already proved in this game uh, his excellence on the court, uh, making a lot of high IQ plays. Um, and he'll be taking his talents to Division I Ryder. Uh, that'll be uh, obviously a match made in heaven there. Ryder recruits a lot of local players in the area. Uh, and Flash Burton will add himself to a local legacy um, that has solidified itself in the MAAC for generations. So here we'll have Quinn underneath the basket. And right there, picked up by Preston Washington. LaSalle, 20 seconds to move. Finding O'Brien, and O'Brien getting up all the way. And they're calling a travel on O'Brien. So I guess the argument was that he had caught the ball, and then the steps that followed were illegal. O'Brien's not a fan of that call, but O'Hara will take it. They are up 11 points here with 17.4 seconds in no particular hurry. Controversial call, call there, Danny. LaSalle could have been down by nine, being down only by single digits coming into the half. Yeah, absolutely. So we're here with seven seconds left and counting. Clark, the ball in his hands. What can Clark do? And right there, up and down, called on Clark. You saw him plant that pivot foot. Ball came under, hand came under the ball. That one right there is enough to call it. So one second left. Washington will fire this one off. And Washington nearly missing on that one. So guys, before we take this one to commercial for halftime, some thoughts here after one half. I mean, O'Hara's done a really good job of just controlling this game, taking the shots that they want to, that they want to take and just giving it to their guys who are leaders on the team like Pierce McGuinn and Flash Burton. And we're seeing smaller some underclassmen like Ty G. Clark making some threes and showing his young talent for this O'Hara team. And LaSalle just can't make a three. I think they've just took him the best shots that they can, but they can't knock one down. They'll come into the second half stronger than ever. Yeah, absolutely. Oliver. Very sloppy from LaSalle to start. A lot of offensive turnovers, travels, carries. Um, it's been the same way towards the end of the half for the Lions as you see the carry. Uh, call at the end of the half, but they have to clean it up if they want to get away back in the game. They can't keep throwing away chances. They had a really good chance to close out the half with the O'Brien too, but he got called for the travel. And when you're trying to fight your way back into a game, you can't be giving up opportunities like that. Yeah, absolutely. So right now we will take this one to commercial here. Stick with us, folks. We have the second half coming right up. Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 
7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. One of the most important relationships a business can have is with its commercial banker. This is Bob Long, and when I'm not broadcasting sports, I'm servicing my clients and building relationships with prospective clients. Whether now is the time to grow through capital investment, to drive operational efficiencies, or to leave a legacy through succession planning, I can be a resource to guide you through the process. Bob Long, a commercial banker in the greater Philadelphia area, where my goal is to help your business grow. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of, what you are made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org. I chose CCM because I have found that this company, um, on the level of scaling that we have here, the volume that we are doing, to truly have every department head and employee fully engaged in the mission of the company to make it an originator focused, uh, production first uh, company. I have not found that anywhere I've worked and I've worked at one of the largest banks in the world, down to the smallest tiny community bank and correspondent lender. No one has been able to consistently deliver that message. LaSalle is dynamic. Prepared. Active. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dunphy difference. You'll be glad you did.
One of the most important relationships a business can have is with its commercial banker. This is Bob Long, and when I'm not broadcasting sports, I'm servicing my clients and building relationships with prospective clients. Whether now is the time to grow through capital investment, to drive operational efficiencies, or to leave a legacy through succession planning, I can be a resource to guide you through the process. Bob Long, a commercial banker in the greater Philadelphia area, where my goal is to help your business grow. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of, what you're made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org. I chose CCM because I have found that this company, um, on the level of scaling that we have here, the volume that we are doing, to truly have every department head and employee fully engaged in the mission of the company to make it an originator focused, um, production first uh, company. I have not found that anywhere I've worked and I've worked at one of the largest banks in the world down to the smallest tiny community bank and correspondent lender. No one has been able to consistently deliver that message. And we are back live here from Cardinal O'Hara High School where the Los Al Explorers are down 11 points here on the road, still searching for their first Philadelphia Catholic League win. Cardinal O'Hara themselves searching for their second league win. They had beaten Egan earlier in the season in their second league game, but went on a little bit of a losing streak. They've lost four consecutive games in the PCL. LaSalle five, still winless, but playing great basketball nonetheless, but in need of a comeback here in this one. Down by 11 points. We are just about ready to get underway. Guys, before we do get underway, how about some thoughts here going into the second half? What does LaSalle need to focus on to come back in this game? And rather, what does O'Hara need to do to solidify them getting back into the win column. Alex? Yeah, well, I think LaSalle's done a pretty good job of taking good shot selection, and they've done a good job of making inside presence through Grayson McHugh and Joey O'Brien. But I think if they start knocking some more threes down and finding some more shots for Nick Parisi, where he did make a couple in the first half, but if he gets hot in the second half, like we saw at Wood, where they had a 14-point lead against that talented Wood team in the first half when Nick Parisi had 20 points in the first half. Oliver? Oliver? Yeah, for LaSalle, they just got to clean it up a little bit. There have been a lot of lazy passes, just very risky passes down low. And then they've also had strands where they've been making really good passes. So I think they just have to keep it consistent with the passing. On the uh, O'Hara side of things, I don't think they have to change anything. If they keep playing the way they have been, they've been taking their threes, they've been making good plays down low, I think they can run away with this game. Yeah, absolutely evident here for the Explorers if they can get into the win column here. But it all starts right now in this quarter especially with a big comeback. And right here, the original starting five in for LaSalle in the blue Under Armour uniforms. Liam Holly will get the ball here to get things underway in this contest. One half remains here from O'Hara. A lot on the line in PCL play. That right there missed on the front end of the rim by Parisi. Uncharacteristic game from Parisi. He's not been good from three, but throughout the year, he's been amazing. Yeah, that man right there has been excellent from three. Flash Burton there, cashing in on just another triple for the Lions. He has been brilliant in this game, solidifying himself as one of the best scorers in the Philadelphia region as a whole. All Delco, all PCL. And a bright future ahead of him 
and he's done a great job here with his senior year. O'Hara coming out with a different type of defense in the second half, running a 1-3-1 zone, kind of trying to force LaSalle to take some shots from the corner, but LaSalle did a good job of just moving the rock and finding Grayson McHugh in the bottom. Oh, Grayson McHugh right there is picked off by Clark. The foul goes on the floor again. That's a really tough foul to give up. We talked about it a lot. LaSalle definitely cannot afford to give up fouls here in these quarters. And right there, Grayson on that ball picked away and found him with the reach in. So that'll be Clark there under the basket. Quinn getting some space off for easy. Clark now into the corner. Back out to Quinn, McGuinn. Clark there pulling up. He'll miss right there on that one. Back down low. McGuinn trying to get up with that one. Can't find anything over McHugh. So now Ty G. Clark here, number 15, has the ball again. He'll pass off to John Quinn. McIntosh now with the ball. Again to McGuinn, and that one well off there, long off the back end of the backboard. 39-27 is our score. Well, Sal has really failed to find the basket from afar in this game. This quarter will tell a lot to see if they can get back into the point column there. Shields missing on that three right there. Nice to see Joe Shields shooting the three-point shot there. He kind of hesitated to shoot it in the first half, but we'd like to see him shoot some more in the second. Yeah, Good right steal. there, that ball poked away by Nick Parisi, and he'll be driving in on McGuinn, looking for the foul right there, and he'll get that. And one, a great play there for number four. I mentioned That's him. a heads-up play, Oliver. I mentioned him not shooting well today, but he's been doing that amazing. A lot of steals, a lot of aggressive plays, getting those quick points um, on the breakaways, and... Now he gets himself a chance at the line for a three-point play. Yep, so definitely a big three-point play here. Could that change the momentum and cut this one down to single digits, which it will not. He'll miss right there. A 10-point lead for the Lions. Burton here with the ball. Burton flashing by Hayes Altamari, if you will, pun intended, getting right to the basket and putting that one away. I mean, how about that? It's really hard to see a player who's so consistent from the perimeter, but also just so skilled on the interior. So Hayes Altamari now with the ball. Dumps that one in, Joe Shields. Parisi will let one fly. Once again, a miss from beyond for the Explorers. The shooting stroke is a little bit tough to come by tonight. So Burton right there off the front end of the rim. Sal definitely needs to play some up-tempo basketball. Heighten the pace right there. Shields will miss on that three. And that ball will be tipped away. Altamare looked to find Parisi. The Explorers do not like the call, however. But it looks like that will remain Lion Ball nonetheless. McHugh now coming out. And number three, Joey O'Brien. Coming in for the Explorers. Now McGuinn with the ball. He'll wait for his Lions to get back. Clark passes to Burton. Burton. Burton taking Hayes on one-on-one. -on -one. Hayes with a great block right there. Shields now taking this one up for LaSalle. Finding Parisi. The Explorers need some urgency here, and they'll get it. Nick Parisi with a nice layup. Still a 10-point game here in Delaware County. And Joey O'Brien did a great job of getting around to that ball. But it looks like LaSalle there will pick up the team foul. A uh, timeout called, I believe. Oh, that's a timeout on the floor. So a great play right there. A 30-second timeout called by Ryan Ansel. O'Brien was all over the defender. And they did a great job of closing out with that full court set but also being mindful of the fact that a reach and foul can be called in a scenario like that. So definitely important to take it into the timeout, regroup, uh, and they'll get right back out here uh, with a fresh slate from full court.
So a 10 point lead, lead remains here for O'Hara. LaSalle once again tightly guarded. Oh, and right there, great play by Shields. Good effort Tipped by out. Shields. However, like you said, great effort on that play. This is the intensity they need to get themselves back into this game. Yeah, Being exactly. Aggressive. It all starts right here with tightly guarding O'Hara as best as possible and seeing how well LaSalle can move in transition, create scoring opportunities, and move from there. Clark now to Quinn. Freezy trying to poke that one free. Tries to come around Clark. Ball is passed off to Flash Burton. Flash Burton, number two. That one up to Quinn. Clark surveys and passes it back out to Flash. No shot clock here, but Flash will get a shot off from close range. Not a hand in front of him at all, so an uncontested floater, which he will sink. A risky pass right there is picked up by Quinn, ultimately into the hands of Hawley. Did a great job tracking back. Now he'll have an open shot of his own, but chooses to pass it off to Shields. That's a couple times that they've tried to find Parisi in the corner with a long pass. And they've been just chucking the ball down the court back and forth. Here we have Clark. Quinn now. And they're gonna call an illegal screen right there on Clark. So that's a big break for the Explorers right here. Only down 12 after all this. So the Explorers, this game is absolutely within reach. As for Cardinal O'Hara, that's a, a foul that's absolutely frustrating. On the break of scoring that and extending that lead to 14 points. So Holly here will be the man in the backcourt for LaSalle. He'll cross over, drive in. Kick that one out to Parisi. Parisi will find Hudak down low. Hudak, a nice bucket right there from the senior guard. Done a great job this year off the bench. A high impact player for the Explorers. But right there, LaSalle picks up another foul. That'll be an inbound play right there. Foul's on O'Brien. Came in a little bit too close right there and got the call against him. O'Brien has picked up a lot of fouls this year, trying to win the ball in the middle of the court, trying to wrestle the ball away. This is the second time he's done that in the past couple minutes. He's got called for the foul here. Yeah, but in many ways, though, O'Brien definitely one of the hard-nosed players of this LaSalle team. That's his role right there, to be a tenacious defender, facilitate points offensively, and just play the role. But right there, a great bucket from McIntosh. Getting all the way up there, using that size to his advantage. And number three does it again. He's had a lot of interior points tonight. And he'll just continue to score here for Cardinal O'Hara. Parisi now pulling up from deep. And Parisi right there will sink that one. That's the range right there that Nick Parisi can shoot from. We all saw it all year long against the likes of St. Joe's Prep. Archbishop Wood and etc. He's been great from deep. Jump ball right there on that play. That'll stay O'Hara ball. There's O'Brien wrestling for the ball in the court, in the center of the court again. Oh, so right there. O'Brien did a great job picking that one off. He'll take Burton on one-on-one, -on -one and a great layup right there. Some acrobatics going up with that one. A tremendous job of putting that one up, but that's Quinn right there. Pass off to McIntosh, and McIntosh, a high layup, but a great charge taken right there. Joey Shields, he's had so many so far this year, and those will just continue to happen right there. Shields getting set under the basket. Feet are positioned correctly. And goes down with the contact right there. That's a textbook draw, guys. I mean, just what a play there by Joey Shields, the senior captain there, just putting his body up on the line and getting LaSalle back into single digits and helping this team out tremendously. 
these past couple minutes shown us how important this game is for LaSalle. A lot of uptight defense. They want the ball. They want to get back into this game. And they're playing smart, really smart play by Shields to get himself set to draw the charge. Breezeway here. Shields now. Back to Parisi. The Explorers definitely need some big points right there. And that one rejected. O'Brien, his shot will miss as well. That ball, however, will stay with O'Hara. Out on LaSalle, the refs call it. And that'll be Lion Ball here with just over a minute to go in our third quarter. 45-38, the Lions lead. And LaSalle once again tightly guarding in this full court set. McGuinn with the ball though. No men on him. The Q will pick him up. That's Quinn. No shot clock here in Philadelphia Catholic League ball. So Cardinal O'Hara can take however long they please. Flash Burton right there. He's been an excellent scorer tonight. Down to Quinn and Quinn right there getting that one up. Did a great job passing that ball to Miles Johnson. He's been great from the interior as well. Between McIntosh and Johnson, the Lions have completely utilized that interior and scored a lot of buckets in the paint. That foul right there will go against Quinn, which will send Holly to the line, however. The Explorers down single digits, only nine points here, with the opportunity to cut this lead to seven. This game is absolutely within reach here for the blue jerseys. So Holly here off the front end of the rim to start. New players here checking in for LaSalle. Parisi coming off. Hayes Altamari checking in for LaSalle. It's now Holly with another chance to snip away at this lead, which he will convert on. Holly, one of two from the line. 39-47 is your score here from Delaware County. Plenty of time left for the Lions to get a last minute point right here. Ran through the arms of Burton. Now Burton tightly guarded by O'Brien. Burton some dribble moves. Still has the ball in his hands here. 10 seconds remaining. Picked up by Preston Washington. Tightly guarding him, and he will foul him right there. Some absolute contact on the ball. So three team fouls for the Explorers. Not sure that it will really matter that much with 7.3 seconds remaining. But an impound pass will ensue from Quinn. Now off to Pierce McGuinn. Right now Burton, three seconds left. Burton will pull up, and that one right there off the backside of the rim and out. So 39-47 is your score. The Explorers down by eight points, guys. Some takeaways there from that quarter of basketball. I mean, such a better quarter there for the Explorers. They are just kind of taken away from that O'Hara lead. They were down by double digits, pushing almost a blowout, but they're coming back in. We saw some nice layups by Joey O'Brien there and some nice threes made by Nick Parisi and just showing why he's the leader on this team. But LaSalle's just been just penetrating and playing good offense, and they've also been playing very good defense. Oliver? Yeah, they've been doing very well on defense, like you said. They've got a lot of put points put up on the uh, first half, and they're trying to limit that. They're playing tighter defense. They're playing well. They're limiting the chances that the uh, O'Hara's been getting from three, and this is why they're back into the game. They're playing all around better basketball. It's about eight points right here. Lines were up by absolute double digits coming in to that third quarter. LaSalle chipped away at that lead bit by bit with the help of some nice fouls, sending the Explorers to the line. But right now, the fourth quarter here will tell the tale. Will O'Hara get back on track here and acquire their second win in Philadelphia Catholic League play, where Will LaSalle Finally erase the goose egg there in the win column and pick up one of their own on the road here. A lot of action here to follow as Luke Hudock will get the ball and play the point guard role to start the quarter. Russell Washington guarded tightly by Clark. Cue back out the press. 
Preston Washington finding Hudak. Hudak here finding O'Brien. Pass that one out to Hayes out to Mari. Hayes out to Mari right there. A little bit long on the three. Picked up. Joey O'Brien will put that one up. It's a high IQ play right there. Just poked free. And LaSalle gets two of their own. A six point game. Tightly guarding Clark. Finding Burton. Burton there to McGuinn. And McGuinn taking his time, shying away. But Burton right there. Fearless going up with that one. Around the rim and in. Flash Burton. Just another interior point here for the Lions. And that's an offensive foul on LaSalle. So O'Hara will get the ball back here up eight points with seven minutes here to go. What a sequence there. And O'Hara can capitalize off that, gentlemen. That's a killer right there. LaSalle, good start to the quarter. Gave up those points, and now they just give the ball right back. So Quinn here with the ball, recognizing the time on the clock. Looking to run these offensive sets for Cardinal O'Hara. That ball poked free by McHugh. Covered by McGuinn. And McGuinn top of the key. Clark driving in. And Clark right there. How about that for a basket? Taji Clark going up on the likes of a guy about a head and a half taller than him, Grayson McHugh. That's just a fearless play right there from number 15. Been a floor general all night, created a lot of scoring opportunities. And right there, creating some scoring opportunities for himself, getting up right there with the end one and the chance for the old fashioned three point play, gentlemen. How much of a difference maker is a player like Ty G. Clark in a game like this, guys? He's done such a good job of being that third option on this team. You know, two senior leaders, top two scorers on the team, and then you have Ty G. Clark. I mean, just such a great player off the ball and on the ball who can make his own shot. Just done a great job. That one right there off on the outside edge of the rim by Hudak, but picked up there. That ball tipped away by number five, Miles Johnson. So crazy here under the hoop. Q now with the ball. Oh, crazy right there. That ball is absolutely clasped by the hands of Quinn. And it looks like the arrow will point in the way of the Lions there. So Cardinal O'Hara with the ball here. Quinn did a great job of getting the full palm of his hand around that basketball from Parisi. Tried not to reach in. Parisi almost with a steal of himself. But right there, oh my goodness, Miles Johnson could have went up with it. That ball will stay with LaSalle College High School. Johnson was looking to get up with that one. Possibly throw one down here in this gym, but LaSalle will absolutely take advantage of that turnover here. Only down by 11 points. Preston Washington with the ball in his hands, number 15. Preston Washington there driving in. Ball is tipped away. But they're gonna call a foul on the floor. Preston Washington was going up with that one, a shooting foul for the Explorers. Just the Lions first of the night. Right there, Preston Washington will not convert on the first. Free throw has been a struggle for this LaSalle team all the way up and down tonight. Washington here with the second, which he will convert. A 10 point game here with six minutes remaining. A timeout called. Oh, there's a substitution to be made here. LaSalle still with some timeouts remaining. Ever important they hold on to those as the game comes down. O'Brien there picks up the foul of his own. Tightly guarding number five, Miles Johnson. And he's picked up with the personal. That's his third and the team's second here in this quarter. And LaSalle just cannot keep giving up these fouls if they want to stay in this game with a little bit under six minutes to go. So O'Brien here on Burton. Burton now throws out to Quinn. Quinn to Clark. And Clark right there trying to play unselfish and find the pass. That ball is picked up by LaSalle. Parisi trying to go up with that one. That's a hard layup right there. Quinn a little bit banged up on that play. 
But Paris did a great job of getting right to the basket, looking for the contact, searching the contact out, and putting up a hard-nosed layup right there. Cut this lead to eight points. Yeah, Parisi on that downhill drive was switching the ball left to right, had Miles Johnson a little lost there, and then Parisi just finishes off the bank. Tough shot. Yeah, absolutely a tough shot here, but it's as important as ever that the LaSalle Explorers begin to play some real hard-nosed defense here, get some quality stops, and then put on a showcase in transition if they want a chance at winning this game at least for the Cardinal O'Hara Lions also important that they continue to maximize their own offensive sets, take their time with the ball here. So definitely an interesting five and a half minutes left of action from Delaware County. Quinn now will have the inbound pass. He's been a very active player in this game. I mean, really, O'Hara has only really gone too deep off the bench or so. So a lot of these players have seen most of the game. That right there is a trip on the floor. An unfortunate foul call Parisi, against LaSalle. Parisi not been happy with the past couple calls. Doesn't like the trip there. Didn't get the contact for the foul. And his good layup. Now that's Johnson there picking up the ball. Johnson will take it up for, him, for himself. And Johnson... That will be a foul against O'Hara. Illegal screen there by Pierce McGuinn, trying to get that seal off, but had a little bit too much contact there, drawing the offensive foul. Yeah, so LaSalle can absolutely take advantage of this. They're only down single digits here, eight points. With around five minutes to go. Preston Washington with the ball. Hudak. Hudak to Parisi. Parisi, why not pull up? And a three right there off the front end, picked up by Preston Washington. That ball is blocked from behind. And now it's picked up by Cardinal O'Hara. Miles Johnson has the ball. And he's fouled there by number four, Nick Parisi. Parisi there enraged with that call. But absolutely gave Johnson some contact there. A smart foul for the Explorers. They do have some to give. Now that's their fourth team foul. But Johnson would have had a full head of steam there. And nobody else down low in the paint. Nevertheless, O'Hara will have the ball again. And that's a foul on the floor. A late whistle called on number 15, or number two, I guess. Oh, so the referee is calling for number two, saying the foul's on Luke Hudak and not on Preston Washington. But regardless, Looks like that'll send O'Hara to the line. And Quinn right there will miss on the first. It's dangerous LaSalle territory. Just, yeah, exactly. So LaSalle just hoping now that the Lions can miss as many free throws as possible here as they are now in the bonus. But like I was saying. 44. Like I was saying, Danny, dangerous territory here for the Explorers here. They have five fouls. Now any foul that they have, like the new rule is stated, just like you hear Bob say, two free throws, just like the NBA, not like college. Oh, and how about that rejection right there? Miles Johnson getting up there. The vertical on full display. What a rejection. And the Lions can do something in transition right now. Flash Burton here with the ball. He's pinned back deep. A little bit over four minutes remaining. That's a foul on the floor. Referee calling for a jersey tug there on number three, Joey O'Brien. Like we said before, dangerous territory, Alex. Now you send Flash Burton to the line. He's been knocked down all night from mid-range from beyond the perimeter, from close range in the interior. He has put on an array of scoring right there and he will cash in on the first free throw attempt. An X factor, if you will. So the Lions here up by 10. Four minutes and 17 seconds remain. And 
Burton right there. Two beautiful free throws. And the double digit lead is regained for the Lions. So Holly here with the ball, Parisi coming in, top of the key, that ball is picked away. Johnson again, Johnson's had a tremendous defensive quarter. Burton coming in, the hop step off right there, the side end of the rim. LaSalle picks up the rebound, Holly here pacing up the court. Hayes out to Mari, passes back down. Oh, right there, a great move. A hop, skip, and a jump all the way to the basket. Nick Parisi, number four, scoring once again for the Explorers here. Keeping this one in single digits. Yeah, nice controlled move there by Nick Parisi, just using two feet and staying balanced, just like Flash Burton just tried to do on the other side, but Parisi converted. Very good defense from O'Hara throughout the entire game. Blocks, steals, keeping them, keeping us out, not taking many threes. They haven't been shooting well, so it's just been really high tempo defense from O'Hara. Sal still needs to watch out for this bonus they're in. Those five team fouls. O'Hare with some fouls to give right here. Under four minutes to go in this game. Some other news in PCL play. It looks like Father Judge is currently leading Roman Catholic from their home court. LaSalle will face Roman Catholic on Friday night, or shall I say, Friday afternoon. The game will be played at, I believe, 3.30 p.m. from Roman Catholic. Should be a great game between two classic Philadelphia Catholic League programs. Last year in that game, LaSalle Found themselves with a loss to Roman Catholic, but Xavier Brown with his 1,000th point, point for the Kaolites was a big milestone. It's always a pleasure to call those games. So right there, a foul picked up. William Hawley there, which will send O'Hara to the line once again. Yeah, just definitely a hard job guarding Flash Burton from way outside the three-point line. Just such a shifty and skilled ball handler, so LaSalle's gonna have to foul him. Flash Burton right there, converts on the first. Burton right there will miss on the second. Picked up by Hayes Altamare. Altamari passes that one off to Parisi. Parisi now dumping to McHugh. McHugh looking to find Shields down to the corner. That's Altamari, the corner man. Parisi will let one fly, and Parisi there catches in right there. Great basket for the Explorers. A seven point lead here for the Lions. And LaSalle again in their full court set. So LaSalle is tightly guarding Burton. Now the ball in Clark's hands. McGuinn, been a very active for a center. Been moving all across the court. I'd love to see a heat map of Pierce McGuinn. They do a great job of mobilizing their big men. And getting them active. And right there, nice dime in the alley-oop. And the finish from McIntosh. A team play from the Lions. A spectacular effort there. And it all started with the pass from McGuinn at the top of the key. The center had some dimes. Altamari, nice pass with his own. He'll have an open three, he'll take it, and Altamari will cash in from beyond. The score's only down six with two minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. Yeah, the game absolutely not over. A 10-point lead held by O'Hara. Very vulnerable, a 10-point lead here in the Philadelphia Gothic League. LaSalle now looking to crack back at this. That's Clark, does not pull up with that one. He had a wide open three, chooses to drive in, passes out to Quinn. And it looks like O'Hara is just trying to hold on to the ball for as long as they can. Try to get to the line here and solidify the game with free throw shooting. That foul picked up by 
falling. So now Quinn, another chance at the line here for the Lions. A six point game. It seems like LaSalle has been behind the entire night. Just trying to do whatever they can to catch up to this O'Hara lead. As Quinn will convert on the first. That's number five checking in, Miles Johnson. He's been a tenacious defender in this quarter. Some pokes, some blocks, and some great points in transition tonight. So that'll be Quinn converting on the second. He'll be subbed out by Anthony Hobbs. I mean, really, this Cardinal O'Hara team, for only going seven guys deep, do a great job of keeping their endurance throughout this game. Now that's Hawley right there. He's endured a lot this game, and right there that'll send him to the line. One of the hardest working players on this LaSalle College High School team. And down eight points right now, with about a minute and 42 seconds left to go. They're just hoping for a miracle, and it starts with these two free throw shots from Liam Hawley. She will convert on the first. Now Quinn checking back in. And that's McIntosh, subbed out for the Lions. Did a great job right there on that alley-oop finish just a few minutes ago. One of the highlight plays from this matchup. And Hawley there. Another cash in from the charity stripe. Back to that six-point lead, LaSalle now, looking to see if they can salvage a steal. Clark now with the ball in a double team set. Now Quinn passes out. McGuinn now with the ball. He'll find Clark. It looks like O'Hara is just trying to play keep away for as long as they can before LaSalle will give him a foul. That's Clark with the ball. See, back out to Quinn. And now Burton with it. So O'Hara just playing keep away any way they can. Ball is passed on the baseline. They're calling it out of bounds. So LaSalle ball here. A minute and 19 seconds left on the clock. A six point ball game here from the home of Cardinal O'Hara here in Delaware County. LaSalle in need of a miracle here. They'll start with a big bucket. What can the Explorers craft? Holly now. Holly. Hesitates into Shields, back out to Hawley. Hawley will pull up, and his three right off. It was a great look from Hawley, a high quality shot. Could not convert. Oh, and how about that? That ball is absolutely tipped. A jump ball. And it's a toss up here on the floor. Now they're gonna call a foul, it looks like. The ref originally made the signal for the jump ball, and now, that's Noah McIntosh sent to the line, number three. Guys, am I seeing that right? Yeah, that they looks made clean the jump to me. Ball, they made the jump ball signal. They put two thumbs up. But then, the judge on the court decided that was a foul and would send McIntosh to the line. However, he misses the first. So less than a minute to go right here. And any points here from Cardinal O'Hara can seemingly solidify a game like this. And he misses the second. LaSalle only down by six. A three would put him in a one possession game. Hawley now dumps that one off to Altamari. Altamari there off the back end of the rim. And that's a heartbreaker for LaSalle. Less than a minute to go now and McGuinn has the ball. LaSalle not fouling McGuinn. Finally. Nick Parisi there picking up McGuinn with the foul. A really tough miss from Altamari. LaSalle had great looks all night long. Just could not hit from deep. And some nights in high school basketball are just like that. You do everything you can to create shot opportunities, work the ball to the best of your ability. At the end of the day, it may just not be enough, and that ball may just not find the right end of the basket. 
So timeout here called by Cardinal O'Hara. 62-54 is your score. And to answer the question that we posed at halftime, it appears that Cardinal O'Hara will get back into the win column off of a tough loss to Archbishop Ryan, 62 to 50. The Lions will get back into the win column and LaSalle will lose their sixth straight and their sixth in PCL play. A tough start here and a lucky performance as a lot of key shots could not fall in this one. It's right there, saying there's plenty of time left on the clock. 40 seconds here, down eight points. The Explorers need quick baskets and to get back in transition, foul as soon as possible, and pray for some O'Hara misses. Let's see what'll happen. Preezy now with the ball. Down to Hawley, Hawley will pull up, quick release, and Hawley will convert on the tray ball. Another timeout call there from LaSalle. 62-57 is our score now. Only a five-point game, about half a minute to go. That was a big make there from Hawley from deep. So this game is actually all but over. Only two scores here. So you can look to say that LaSalle will do their best to foul as soon as possible and then see if they can get back and make some, some key shots here which most likely will be contested. So Judge up right now, 65, Roman Catholic, 58. And as of two minutes ago, there was a minute and 37 to play in the fourth. So a huge upset in the works there in Philadelphia County as opposed to Delaware County there from the floor of Father Judge. That'll shake things up big time in the standings. And it'll shake things up especially for LaSalle when they look to play Roman Catholic later in the week, Friday afternoon. That'll be a statement win for the Crusaders. And definitely a stepping stone loss for the Kaolites as they look to push into the final four of Philadelphia Catholic League play. A timeout right there is called by Quinn, and the Lions will have another chance to rework things from the huddle. I guess LaSalle did a great job there of guarding the man and the space, eliminating all options, and forcing that timeout to be called. I mean, they have timeouts to give, so a smart decision there from Quinn not to hold on that, to that one beyond the five second mark. But LaSalle continuing to work and do their job here with half a minute to go in this quarter. LaSalle still in the bonus, so any fouls on the floor will go toward the Lions and send them to the line. But the ideal play here is an intercepted pass and a ball straight up to the rack. But it's a lot easier said than done in conditions like this. Down five points, half a minute to go. Quinn now with the inbound play. Quinn right there, that ball is picked away. Hudak falls on that one. Hawley there, not too much time left. Parisi from deep, and Parisi right there misses on that ball. That ball is picked up again, toss up, and that ball is ultimately picked up by O'Hara. That's Quinn with the ball and a foul on the floor. So how about that for an entertaining sequence? Bodies on the floor. Glad to see both Hawley and Quinn get up okay. 
and the foul is going to go on Liam Hawley. Which will send Quinn to the line. What a sequence, guys. Hudak had that ball. It was a toss up after Parisi had missed the three pointer. The ball was in no man's land, deep in the paint. And Quinn was the guy to fall on it. So as the Sal was in the bonus. John Quinn will be sent to the line. Quinn right there will cash in on the first. Six point lead for Cardinal O'Hara. Just what a huge missed chance there for the Explorers there off the inbound play. That three right there would have cut the lead to just two points. And the Sal could have found themselves in a tight contest. Now Hudak with the mid-range J. That'll miss off the front end and over. Another foul on the floor which will send Burton to the line. Again, 63-57 is your score. Six-point lead here. And Flash Burton... He has been a star in this game. Done a great job of getting to the rim in all aspects on the floor. Created great shots, facilitated plays, moved the ball brilliantly, and had a phenomenal shooting stroke from deep. So Burton right there, broken boot. 65-57 is your score. Preston Russian with the ball now. Under 10 seconds to go. Dumps off to Joey O'Brien. O'Brien with the three. That'll miss. Ball is picked up right there by number zero, Anthony Hobbs. And that'll be the ball game. 65-57. to 57. Your final score here from Cardinal O'Hara. And gentlemen, before we take this one away, some thoughts here as LaSalle falls another in the PCL. I mean, just great job by O'Hara, just sticking to the course, just winning every quarter, and just showing why they're not one of the bottom teams of the PCO, and they're still contending, breaking that streak of losses there, and now putting them on two and five for the PCL. Danny? Oliver? Yeah, O'Hara played a lot better than a one and five team tonight. They were really good from three, made good passes, took their opportunities down low. But again, it was a game that LaSalle, if they had cleaned it up a little bit, they could have gotten closer. They could have edged out the win. So it's another one that'll hurt for LaSalle. Um, and now it gets into real desperation mode for them if they want to realistically make a shot at the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely a tough loss there for LaSalle. Falling to 0-6 in PCL play. We'll be back later this week, Friday afternoon. LaSalle College High School Explorers will take on the Kaolites of Roman Catholic. Should be a great game as the Kaolites fell to the Crusaders of Father Judge today. So a lot in store here later in the week. So stick around for that broadcast as we'll have that up and running in no time. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Bob Long Sports and the Bob Long Sports Network, my name is Danny Roby, your play-by-play -play commentator for tonight. Special thanks to Brady Joyce, running cams as always, as well as our esteemed color broadcasters, Alex Shevchuk, as well as Oliver Gomez. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for your time. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back.